This is the Noco Genius 2 car battery trickle charger maintainer. So we're gonna try it on my Camry Hybrid battery. This is a 2008 Camry Hybrid and the battery's in the trunk. And uh, long story short, the car hasn't been driven much recently, so uh, the battery's not quite charged. Uh, let's find out how much charge it has. Okay, I'm gonna hold the phone and attempt to look at the voltmeter at the same time. I don't know if this will work. Eleven point four. Okay. So they say that a fully charged battery should be about uh, twelve point eight volts, and so this is significantly undercharged. And so we'll try the Noco Genius 2, see what we can do with it. Okay, so now the clamps are connected to this charger unit. And there's a nice uh, electrical outlet plug here. And I'm actually gonna go and uh, have the electrical line go through the window to an outdoor outlet. Okay, the manual says, do not connect it, the AC power plug until all the other connections are made. So, I'm going to do that. Connect the red clamp to red and the black to black. Okay, so here's red. It is not plugged into the outlet. Maybe we'll just connect it here. I wonder if that'll work. And black to black. Try one more time to get this red one to Connect there. Okay, maybe that's better. Okay. And then, connect the AC out. So I'll do that next. Okay, this is the exciting part. It says do not face the battery when making this connection. So, we're going to see what happens. Here we go. Now it's supposed to start off in standby mode, which means this shouldn't be doing anything. Let's take a look. Okay, yes, there is a orange light there. That probably means standby. Okay, now the next step is to pick the mode, and the choices are 12 volt, 12 volt AGM, there's also lithium at 6 volt, and I believe there's also a force mode. Now, the tricky thing is to figure out whether this is an AGM battery or not. Uh, I went onto the internet and tried typing in some of these numbers and the best I could find is some random person on the internet says this is an AGM battery. So I'm gonna go with that. So I'll hit the mode button until AGM is lit. 12 volt AGM. Okay. And you can see there's one red bar at the, the smallest bar so hopefully it's doing something so just out of curiosity i want to kind of see what the voltage is when this thing is charging 12.07 now this device uh, claims to have a desulfating mode apparently sulfation is something that can happen to the batteries and it reduces the uh, capacity now i don't have any way of verifying whether or not this battery is experiencing this problem or not. They say that the desulfating mode happens automatically. It's not something that you can select manually. So uh, maybe it's doing it, maybe not. And uh, we'll just let this thing run for a while and see what happens. So I just wanted to give a little bit more background about uh, what's going on with this battery. Uh, if you're not interested, go ahead and skip ahead about five minutes in the video. Uh, so basically this car you know, I used to commute every day, drive it about a uh, half hour each way, so probably five or six hours a week. And uh, then after a while I was working from home, so I didn't drive it as much. So about a year and a half ago, um, got a new battery. So this is, this battery is only a year and a half old, and uh, so it should still be in pretty good shape. But I was driving the car maybe once per month, maybe once every two months. And it was fine for a while, and then uh, at some point it died, and I called AAA and uh, got it uh, jump-started, drove it around a bit, 
And then I was trying to drive it once every two weeks, but it still died. And uh, so then I got this thing at Costco. It's a Type S power bank. And uh, yeah, I would recommend this if, uh, if you have a similar problem. It's a small device and basically you, um, you just can jumpstart your car with it. And if you see here, 96%. My one complaint about this thing is that if you press the button, it shows that 96% for like a third of a second and then shuts off. I wish it would stay on a little bit longer. Um, but 96%, like uh, we, I got this back in December, so it's two and a half months old. Jump started the car, so charge charged up this device, jump started the car twice, and Two and a half months later, it still has 96% charge, so that's that's really nice. So let me just show some of the other uh, things this can do. So if I hold the button down, you can see there's a kind of a flashlight here. Click it again. Now it's blinking. And I think if I it was blinking again, so if I double click the button, it gives you that. Two red lights. Click it again. Blinking lights. So this can be, this can serve as a kind of a hazard light for your car. Slower blinking. And there we go. And uh, just real quick, the way this works is you can uh, charge it through um, basically this small USB. I think it's a USB-C, and it can provide. It can actually charge through the USB ports, and. Uh, then if you want to jump start, it has this connection here and gives you battery clamps um, similar to what the, uh, the charger has. And you connect those to uh, your battery or your car and then you can uh, jump start with that. Uh, now, um, I should mention, so this has 96% after two jump starts. Uh, I don't know anything about cars myself, but uh, from what I've been reading, the Camry Hybrid, the 12 volt battery, doesn't actually start the gas motor um, that's done by the big hybrid battery and the hybrid battery is what charges the 12 volt battery so anyway it, it may not actually need a lot of energy to start the car so what happened was i tried to start the car and it didn't start and uh there was a check vsc system light that came on in the dashboard and if you look up check VSC system, it probably tells you something about uh, vehicle stability control. But I had seen something similar happen before, so I didn't think it was that. And sure enough, it was just the battery was discharged. That was the problem. That was early December, and I measured the voltage. That was the first time I measured the voltage of the battery, and it was 9 volts. So yeah, pretty discharged. Um, charged it with the power bank and drove it around a little bit. Went up to 11.6, but then it kind of dropped down again. Had to jump start it again. And then, so after that I was, um, oh yeah, I took it to AutoZone for a battery test and they said it was about 40% charged. And AutoZone will actually, they have a free battery charging service, but unfortunately you have to take out the battery yourself from the car. And I uh, didn't really want to deal with that, so uh, didn't do it. But I was trying to, use the car a little bit more um, now I read that you can you don't have to actually drive the car you can just turn it on and sit in it so I did some of that yeah between driving and sitting uh, I got the battery the voltage to go up a little bit higher than it was it was maybe around 11.8 11.6 this last digit here the point X volts I would uh, take that with a grain of salt because I've seen quite a bit of variation. Um, one time it was 11.6, and then the next day it was 11.9, just sitting there. Uh, so I don't know if it's temperature or something that the car is doing, but uh, you know, there's some fluctuation there. So I'd say, you know, these numbers maybe give it plus or minus 0.2 volts. Uh, went on a 10-day trip in late December, and actually the car started. The, the voltage was down to 10.7 when I came back, but the car did start. So then I was, you know, driving and sitting in the car some more. It was pretty consistently in the upper 11s, 11.8, 11.9. Uh, 
so finally I decided, you know what, I'm going to try and uh, drive slash sit in the car quite a bit. So I did almost five hours in a week. And this is more than I would want to do normally for a car that uh, I don't really use. We have another car, Chevy Volt. It's a plug-in hybrid. Uh, we can do most of our things without uh, using gas with that car. So I kind of prefer using that. Um, so I don't really want to spend five hours driving this car or sitting in it. Uh, but anyway, just as an experiment, I tried doing that and finally was able to get the, the kind of the overnight after resting it overnight, the voltage to be consistently above 12 volts. It was like 12.1, 12.2. And uh, people say that even if it's 12.5, it's still kind of significantly discharged. So it was certainly improved, but it was, uh, you know, nowhere near fully charged. So next week, about two hours and 15 minutes. And the voltage was about the same. Uh, it might have gone down a little bit, it's hard to tell, but it was about the same. And then the next week I tried only one hour, and yeah, the voltage dropped a little bit. And then after that I, I really didn't drive the car too much. And so it's now been a week and a half, two weeks that I since I drove the car, and so the voltage was down to 11.4. And uh, so now we're gonna try this uh, charger. And if this works, this is great because I can just plug this into the outlet. Uh, we have solar panels, so it's kind of like free electricity. Just plug it in and walk away. And uh, that's a lot easier than you know, sitting in the car for half an hour or whatever. I, I don't really want to turn on the car and then walk away from it. Uh, it seems kind of unsafe. So if this works, this would certainly be a much better thing. Plus, I don't have to burn gasoline. Every time I turn on the car, uh, the gas engine does come on, uh, not for too much, but you know, two two minutes. If, I, if I'm in here for 45 minutes, the gas engine probably comes on for four or five minutes. You know, that's extra gas that's being burnt and something goes into the air and I have to pay for it. So, um, you know, it's preferable to charge the battery through the wall outlet if that works. So we'll see what happens. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes, so let's try to measure the uh, voltage again, just to see, out of curiosity. 12.24. It's a little bit higher than when we started. No change on the unit itself. The first red light is still kind of, I guess it's pulsing. It kind of comes on and goes off. Uh, so that, according to the book, means it's still not quite 25% charged. Uh, so it's only been 20 minutes, so we'll just leave it. Okay, it's been about an hour. 12.65. No change on this device, though. The small light is still kind of pulsing on and off. Okay, we'll keep going. Two hours total after we started charging. The voltage is 12.6 volts. And now we have one bar solid, and the second bar is pulsing. So it looks like we're making some progress. Okay, it's been three hours since we started. 13.18 volts is showing up. And it looks like we've now got two solid bars, and the third one is pulsing. That's pretty good. That means we're past 50%, I think. Okay, it's been four hours since we started charging. 13.5 volts. And look, we've got a green light now. I think this means it's almost done. It's dark, so I'm gonna unplug this and try it again tomorrow. I'm also kind of curious to see what the voltage of the battery is uh, after leaving it overnight. Okay, day two, 12.10 volts. Kind of low, given that uh, the green light came on yesterday, but so it's only been about four hours of charging yesterday, so I just plugged it in again. Well, it's back to one bar blinking, but uh, that might change quickly. Anyway, we'll just uh, let it go and see what happens. This is after one hour on day two, so five hours of charging total. The voltage is 13.4. It looks like we've got a pulsing green light. So, it looks like pulsing green LED 
bulk charge complete, optimizing battery for extended life. Solid green LED, when the battery is 100% charged, the charge LED will be solid green. I think I'll just wait and see if I can get it to be solid green. After three hours on the second day, so that's seven hours total, we still have a pulsing green light. Five hours on day two, so nine hours total, still have a pulsing green light. Not really sure I trust these lights and how accurate they are. It's been another six hours of charging today, so that's 10 hours total. And it looks like the green light is still pulsing. End of day three, after five more hours of charging, we still have a pulsing green light, 15 hours of charging, with a three and a half day break in the middle. Okay, end of day four, it was seven and a half hours of charging today, and it looks like we still have a pulsing green light. Okay, so I ended up charging overnight, and so it got about 15 and a half hours of charge, it was about 38 hours total. Now we have a green pulsing light and the other lights are off. So maybe that's a good thing. Okay, voltage, 38 hours of charge and two days of driving. 12.18, okay, that is terrible. All right, voltage is 12.43. It's kind of good because it's higher than I've seen before, but it's also kind of disappointing because it is quite a bit lower than 12.8, which is what they say a fully charged battery should be. It's now been some 90 hours of charging with three days of break. I think there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, one possibility is I noticed that the battery says 57 amp hours, and I believe the Genius 2 is actually only rated at 40 amp hours. Now, some people said that it should still work. It just will take a long time. Uh, so maybe it will just take longer. Uh, another possibility is the battery is actually damaged in some way and that this is as much charge as it's going to get. It's just not going to get any higher. Anyway, the device is still useful. I can at least keep the battery charged up to this point without driving the car, so that's uh, still useful. Um, they are more powerful models of the Nokia Genius. There's like a Genius 5 and a Genius 10. They cost more money. But I think some of them might be rated for 57 amp hours. So it's a little bit disappointing, but still useful. I guess that's my conclusion. So just a little epilogue. After about 60 more hours, around 150 total hours of charging, I finally got a solid green light. And uh, the voltage measured was about 12.65, which is not bad. So I think the conclusion is that uh, this charger does work for this size of battery, but uh, it just might take a really long time, uh, which is okay with me. So I think I'm pretty happy with it. Thanks.